Hi, this is James Scott, Born on the Body. In this episode, we're going to review the game Ecos First Continent by AEG Games, designed by John D. Clare. It's two to six players, 45 to 75 minutes of playtime, ages 14 and up. Uh, on the play count, two to four is probably the sweet spot on the playtime, probably more along the lines of two hours longer on your first game. Uh, player count does really affect the, this play on this game uh, as later in the game it does start kind of bogging down which you'll see in Ecos you will be playing forces of nature that are trying to shape the earth or the planet into way you think it should be and it is a point game there is no turns in this game it's, a, it's got a really neat function where as a player goes, everybody will be using the same resources. You will start play with four tiles. They're going to be arranged in different ways. Uh, they got these nice uh, cardboard hex squares. And they have different ways of setting it up. This is the basic setup that uh, they recommend. Then you'll be given 12 cards. You will have on the cards they have these little symbols down here for the different footprints of the animals and there are six different types of pre-made decks that are they recommend of picking from they three of those cards that little footprints a little darker well you put those three cards into play as, as your starting card the other nine cards become part of your starting hand as you play uh, you also will be giving seven of these little wooden cubes it is a point track game and there is a point tracker and it's one of the one of the nice little features on the game i, I do like uh, some of the little touches they did is you have on one side you have your your score and if you flip it over if you prefer the serpentine style they got the serpentine score i mean I like that. You might as well use the back of, back of the board. On your turn, whoever is the harbinger, you, you want to pick person picked randomly. They go into this really gorgeous bag. I mean, this is this is top rate. This is nice. Pulls out one of these little chips, and on them there's these different symbols, and this will tell you that. That's the power right now. So everybody on their card will have these various symbols and you will take a little wooden cube and you will mark it uh, if you have it on your card. Now you don't necessarily have to mark it, but that's, that's the way you activate. So once you fill it, you will now activate the card. And in player order, whoever's the harbinger going around clockwise, everyone, anyone who fills their card, calls out Ecos and they will do their cards and you will rotate it 90 degrees, remove the cubes and do the different activations on the cards. There's a lot of different cards. Place a mountain, place a water, place a forest, place an animal, score points, get uh, other resources. And then, you, like I said, you will if you notice on these cards there's these leaves up here and that tells you how many uses that card has so even once you use the card most cards have more than one use and you on that has four leaves now it is a little hard to notice but those are actually four little leaves not two big leaves uh, and you will you will rotate it so now you have three uses left to it and then when, once you have all the uses of it you discard it there are some powerful cards that only have one use and then they're gone. The other thing you can do is if you don't have that resource that was drawn out of the bag, or if you choose not to, each player has one of these little cardboard squares, which has on there, it tells you the amount of each of the different symbols, because there are, there are rarer ones and, and more common ones in there. If your other choice is, is you can take this and you can rotate it. And then you can rotate it again next time. And once it gets to this part, you got a choice. You may uh, gain a card out of the card piles, 
or you can leave it alone and you can rotate it again. On this one, you can either take you can take another cube or you can play a card from your hand and, and put it uh, down into play so you can start putting resources on it. When you go to draw the card, you draw from these two different decks. They are, according to the rule book, the blue ones supposedly are a little bit more on scoring. The red ones do a little bit more on a different, have a bunch of other effects, but the blue ones are supposed to be more on for the scoring. Personally, I, I think they should have just made them all one color and just put them all together. I really don't think there's that big of a difference between them to make, have to make two different piles. The, and the, like I said, the other thing is to play one of your cards or get that cube. Uh, what's really nice is you're gonna end up wanting to take a handful of these extra cubes and, and keep rotating this thing uh, to get more cubes because you start with the seven resource cubes and as you can see on the average card is three, four, five different resources on there. So as you put those cubes on there marking that you've using that resource, you may run out of cubes and not be able to uh, do any more and you'll just end up spinning this to end up getting a, a one and you may miss out on, you know, the, the little antelope or the wild or, or this little bullseye one, which are the rare ones. and So everybody keeps taking simultaneous turns and the harbinger keeps drawing from this bag and then eventually in here there are and i probably won't be able to find it because there's only two of them in here there are two wilds when you grab when the harbinger grabs the wild they their turn is over you check the scoreboard has anybody passed 80 points has any if anybody's passed 80 points game over whoever has the highest amount of points wins Simple as that. If nobody has passed 80 points, you take the bag and you pass it to the next player, and now he's the harbinger. You put all the chips back in the bag, shake it up real good, and start over pulling, pulling again. And keep going as you go around. Now, other than putting down the tiles, you will also be placing down these animals, which are, you got these nice little round wish they could have been a little bit bigger but with also i wish those squares would have been bigger because once you put a mountain a forest and a couple of these on there though some of those squares get really packed the these will uh show the different animals they they got a bunch there's two different ones in these nice little cardboard punch outs that you you put together they're really easy to put together Real, real nice, has great artwork on it, tells you what one's going, what area. But on each animal will tell you the area they have to be placed in when you put, when they're put in the board. And once they're on the board, they can move around the board in different areas. Of course, obviously land animals have to stay on land, water animals on water, except for the hippo, they can go on both. Uh, some of them like the gorilla has to go on a mountain. The leopard has to go in an area with trees and what you can do is one of your some of the cards will allow you to put down a mountain uh, you can put a mountain down on any land if you put it in the any area you put it in you can put an extra tree in there because normally in the savannas or the rule book calls it desert but i've, all, I've seen it all online it also be called savannas so uh, being that some of the a lot of these African animals are in there. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be Savannah uh, but the some of the animals I'm sorry When you go to put the mountains in You can put on any land whenever you put a forest down. It can only go in a grassland But if you put a mountain somewhere it increases the amount of forest you can put by one so now you can put two forests in a grassland, or if you put it in a savanna or desert, you can now put one forest in there. So you can start spreading out your forest. The reason why you're doing that is they have what they call habitats, and habitats are kind of a, a linked area. So you'll have like a habitat of mountains. It will be all the linked mountains together. That's one habitat. All the mountains over here that are linked together, that's a separate habitat you have the, uh, the of the different types 
I really like that. It's a neat little thing, so there's a little strategy to it. The combos on these cards are oh, numerous. There are a lot of combos, which is kind of one of the good things and the bad things I do like about the game. Some of the things I really do like about the game, let's go down through. The components are really nice. These trees in the mountains are these really nice big wooden blocks. They're, they're really nice done. I mean, it's these chips in here are really nice. I don't know how well this paint's gonna take. There's the wild right there. I don't know how well the paint will take over time, if it might chip or not. But they even got a little, make a little tray here for the cubes, which is really nice. The rule book is excellent, well done, well written. I mean, it, uh, AG, AG did, did a great job, whoever they had over there, of telling you how to do each of the parts of the setup. Great color pictures well illustrated and as you can see it's a really big book uh, it's only a few pages but it's, it's really big clear pictures and instructions the these little trays are really nice and with the names so you can keep all those without having to dig through bags but then to be honest with you the one thing i, I kind of think they fell short on is the tiles you just you got 75 of these tiles you either put them in a big old Ziploc bag in here or you just leave them around. I think they could have made some type of little, I think it would have been great to make another sheet of cardboard or something with a, to make some type of uh, holder form would have been really nice. But the cards, the artwork has this African theme on it. It's nice. The artwork on the animal cards is nice, but it's so small. You, you barely even see it. Uh, the artwork on these tiles, I mean, it's just grass, <laughs> desert and that. Uh, I do find it kind of weird that the water looks almost as if with, you're like you're looking down at clouds from space, but the savannah or desert and the grassland looks as if you're 100 feet above the ground. These little things are, are a neat little mechanic. I, I kind of like it. It's you can work the combos the placing the cards you put these little symbols on here is nice and the iconology is really simple it's easy to learn uh, you'll notice it, it here you can see that some of these have a uh, green border some have a red border the reason between the two is the red borders generally are stuff that's gonna mess with the board they, they recommend that you tell people look I'm putting down a red border card because you're gonna be doing stuff like, I'm gonna be putting a mountain or uh, a tree down. Hey, you, you might you might be uh, making aware of it. There's not too much take that in the game. You don't really mess with too much of the other players, but you do mess with the board to try to break their strategies. Because one of the things I did find, there are some great combos and with the, the amount of cards get your luck of getting those combos is really thin on some of them but if you get certain combos out of here you you're just gonna blow everyone away and people have need to try to stop you you see somebody have a combo down and you have i found in this game you have to be as much conscious of the other players as you do of your own play just because of the fact that if he gets a certain combo down they they will run they will run the board the other thing i found that i didn't really care for too much is these pre-designed decks i found they were definitely not balanced there are some of them that are so much more powerful starting out coming out of the gate they may later on they may make up for it a little bit but i found that you have to draw cards to try to make up for it but i some of them like the the gorilla one with the mountains if you if they can get their car certain cards out there early and just start putting those mountain ranges out and get that early lead it, it's almost impossible to catch up because now they're going to be watching anybody else getting the combos and a lot of cards of those decks don't have too many ways to stop combos early on um but other than that 
it's don't get me wrong on, on the stuff i mean it's a fantastic game easy to learn you pick it up in a few minutes after a few a few you know pulls of the bag starting to see it i love it there's a lot of potential here for expansions and other stuff for it because there is i do find there is more of a need for on the animals it seems like there's a, a missed opportunity you deal with some of them and a lot of the ones you do when you do deal with the animals it's not enough you're basically putting the animals down to try to pull off a combo or try to pull off points it's it's not much like you're you're trying to put down the antelope to be to build this herd to go over here you're just simply putting down the antelope so that you can use this one card to move them to get points move them again to get points move them again to get points and now the card's done and you'll probably never fiddle with the antelope ever again some other player may need them for his he may put a cheetah down and have the cheetah go go eat up all all of them it'll work for his card but i think there should have been more cards in there to do more with animals to try to to go on there it'll just like the gorillas you go to put the gorillas down they're on the board you get your points for putting them down that's it you'll never fiddle with them again and I, I really would hopefully in some of the expansions in the future if they do for this game i hope they put more opportunities to do that but it, it is definitely a recommended game if you like simultaneous play games and it's definitely family friendly you can sit down with your kids and play it so this is james scout born on the bio remember to like comment like and subscribe below thank you